Just wondering if anything could have been done to prevent the country's second wave. Let's discuss this further now. I'm joined by the University of Cape Town's Professor Mark Mendelssohn. Prof, good morning and thank you very much for your time. You know, we can say what we want. I, I just had an intro talking about it's in our hands because we've been told all the time it's really up to each and every one of us to take the necessary steps to protect ourselves from COVID-19. But as the numbers are increasing, I'm just wondering, could anything different have been done to prevent the second wave? Short of a short of a vaccine, um, I don't think there really there really is. Unfortunately, this is about um, these these public health interventions. I think one of the questions that you know, listening to your intros and thinking about this, I mean, one of the questions that we need to ask is, um, you know, these are simple, um, rational uh, methods of protection. They speak to. Uh, the way that the virus, stopping the virus from spreading because of the way this virus does trans transmit. It transmits through droplets and aerosols from coming from our, our upper airways. And so there's social distancing, staying apart, the issues of, you know, masking, hand hygiene, all these things talk to reducing transmission. They're simple. Glenda Gray says they're blunt, absolutely, but they're simple. Um, interventions. The question is, why are we, why are we um, not continuing these interventions? What is it about the messaging, and what is it we need to do to help people change their behaviour? It's too easy just to say that this is all about fatigue. It's more than that, and I think we need to have a very rapid um, discussion, very rapid look at at our messaging and why this isn't getting through because they are simple and they will protect not only you but your friends family loved ones and the population so that's what we'd still yeah. need to focus on before you know until we get a vaccine what, what, what is it in your view uh, uh, about the messaging that needs to, to, to change where are the gaps I think the, the fact is that it needs to be a, a real suite of communication um, opportunities. We, we know that, you know that there's the formal, sort of traditional, almost Western type of communication um, through perhaps through the press, through newspapers, through government. Um, but then there's all the issues around informal communication methods that, you know, oral um, folk, Theatre, you know, these, these these things are not so much, as I say, traditional, but they're informal and have, for long, you know, hundreds of years, played important parts in communication. And whether there's a gap there is one option, uh, you know, to, to to look at, not to replace the methods that are being used at the moment. Those need to continue and be augmented. But I think there's other areas where we could try yeah. to look to get I mean, these. A week ago, a week ago, Prof, right here on this platform. I began the program looking ahead to the president's speech last week, Thursday, and, and, and saying that, you know, people were speculating in the media, are we going to see stricter regulations again, back to tougher lockdowns? And we didn't get there, but we saw the Eastern Cape identified, particularly Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, as a hot spot. But the messaging is still there. The president was telling, talking to all of us, saying, guys, please take care. Then we get into this phase where there's metric dance parties. There's rage, metric rage parties. We as parents let our children go to the coast to attend these. And these are super spreader events. The younger ones are not really uh, 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 symptomatic. They are asymptomatic, we're told. They, they, they carry the virus, but it doesn't really affect them. But it affects the older people and the more vulnerable. I mean, where, where do you draw the line? Now, we are into the festive season. When you look at social media, people are planning all kinds of things, and there's a lot of excitement about get-togethers and stuff. I mean, should we really be curtailing events at this stage or not? I think we definitely should be curtailing, curtailing events. And, you know, the, the, there is guidance already for um, numbers of, of people at events and around mass gatherings. The, the, real, the real problem, as, you, as you're highlighting, and many people have, have highlighted um, as well, is this issue of super spreading in large gatherings in poorly ventilated areas in particular. So, you know, indoors is worse than outdoors. But even in the outdoor events, there's such a concentration of people at these really mass gatherings and parties, no masking, no attempts at social distancing. And for the virus, you know, it's a playground for the virus. You know, the virus must be, well, it's, it's an early Christmas for the virus. You know, that unfortunately, this is how it thrives. And, 
yes. So there needs to be right, there needs to be tough regulation on on um, mass gatherings, particularly indoor gatherings. Yeah. Like poor ventilation. That's where you get these super, really get these super spreading events. Yeah, and South African youth, and generally at this stage, we are very mobile. We move around a lot, and there's going to be a lot of that. Just a final thoughts from you as we head into January, and people will have gone away on holiday. Uh, uh, or to visit family and stuff across the country. They'll be coming back shortly to their homes and their places of work. What should be taken or held top of mind as you prepare for January? It's the same messaging. You know, uh, unfortunately, it's the same issues when you're going, when you're coming back. But your question was about when you're coming back. So when you're coming back, there's, you know, these... This mantra, this, these issues of keeping your distance from people, with the, the masking, the hand hygiene, etc. But particularly when you are coming back and into places of work, you know, if you are symptomatic, if you develop symptoms, you must isolate immediately and not go into work and potentially spread to others. And that's that is also part of this whole public health intervention that we have. Vaccines on the horizon, it's a slightly distant horizon so far, and it's not the answer, the full answer to this at this stage, because the amount of people we'll be able to vaccinate uh, within this first year, at least, is not going to be enough to actually stop needing to do all of these things that we do in terms of public health interventions. So this is with us, it's not going away. I hope everybody stays safe, and the best way they can stay safe is to really attend to these simple measures that everybody by now surely must know. Yeah, and I think we in the media are just thinking now, uh, quickly, Prof, when we report about the impending vaccine, we need to really paint the real picture to say it's coming, but it's not going to be now. And when it does come, it's going to take a long time for it to be made available to, to everybody. So we shouldn't be reporting it as if it's the, it is the silver bullet that's going to stop everything. Not, not in the immediate term not with the numbers that we'll be able to vaccinate and the coverage, the time it's going to take. So it's, a, it's fantastic. I mean, it's an absolute, you know, fa fabulous way to end the year in that respect, in one respect, because, you know, that there, there have been fun in incredible grounds uh, made, incre in incredible advances, and it will play its, uh, an amazing and a very bit large role. But South Africa, you know, a vaccine is not... Uh, it's going to be here tomorrow. It's not the silver bullet. Uh, if you think it's going to, prove, if it's going to um, make everything okay in the next few months, that's just not going to happen. Prof, thank you very much for your time and insights. Please take care and uh, stay safe. And happy holidays to you and your family in a very responsible manner. We all have to say and do. Thank you very much, Professor Mendelssohn, there from the University of Cape Town. Yeah, we in the media, we are excited as well, like any other, uh, other human being on, 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 this, on this planet when we talk about the vaccine. But we must really be realistic. It's coming, yes. It's been happening elsewhere in the world. But when it does come to this country, it will take a long time for it to take effect. So in the medium term, short to medium term, take care Stay safe. Follow those strict necessary steps to protect yourself, your loved ones, and others. Still ahead on